All right, get ready because today we are really going deep into Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven. The Raven, yeah, you know. It's one of those poems that just sticks with you. Oh, absolutely. You shared this iconic poem with us and we're ready to uncover the layers of meaning hidden within its verses. It's more than just a poem. Yeah. Wouldn't you say? I mean, the Raven, it's a story. It's a narrative poem. This story that unfolds on this bleak December night where our narrator is wrestling with grief oh, yeah. over lost Lenore. Talk about setting the mood. It's like Poe drops us right into the narrator's chilling world. I wow. mean, just from the first few lines, right. you can practically feel the icy December air yes. and the weight of the narrator's sorrow. Yeah. And then there's that tapping at the chamber door. Oh, that tapping. That's where Poe's mastery of suspense just shines. Mm -hmm. He makes you, the reader, lean in, heart pounding, wondering who or what could be outside. Right. The narrator tries to rationalize it as a late night visitor. Yeah. But come on, we all know it's gonna be anything but ordinary. Right. He keeps repeating, nothing more. Yeah. And you start to feel this growing sense of dread. Of emptiness, despair. That phrase, it's not just about the empty space behind the door. Exactly. It speaks to the emptiness inside him. Inside him, exactly. The void left by Lenore. Exactly. And when he throws open the door, expecting someone to be there only to find nothing, it's like Poe turns the volume up on the tension. That nothingness becomes a character itself. It really does. This ominous presence lurking just beyond our perception. That's so creepy. And just when you think things can't get any weirder, mm -hmm. Enter the Raven. Ah, the Raven. Poe was a master of symbolism, and his choice of a raven is no accident. Think about it. Ravens have always been linked with death, ill omens, the mysteries of the afterlife. Oh, yeah, for sure. And Poe plays with those associations brilliantly. Oh, he does. Yeah. He describes this raven as stately, with ebony feathers. Mm hmm perched on a bust of Pallas, the Greek goddess of wisdom. Right. It's like he's juxtaposing this grand almost majestic bird with the narrator's crumbling mental state. That contrast is key. Yeah. On one hand, you have the symbol of wisdom, rationality, palace. Right. On the other, this creature often associated with darkness and the unknown. Yeah. It's like Poe po is hinting at the battle raging within the narrator, the struggle between reason and overwhelming emotion. And then, of course, there's the raven's single chilling utterance. Oh, yeah. Nevermore. I mean, talk about a word that carries a lot of weight. More than just a word, isn't it? Nevermore becomes this haunting echo of the narrator's grief, yeah. his inability to escape the finality of Lenore's death. Yeah. Every time the raven utters it, it takes on a new shade of meaning, twisting the knife a little deeper. Right. It starts as a simple answer to his questions, but as the poem progresses, nevermore, mm -hmm. it morphs into this symbol of inescapable doom. Doom. You can see the narrator spiraling, becoming fixated on the raven right. with its pronouncements. It's like he's looking for an answer, yeah. some shred of hope. But all he finds is that chilling confirmation of his despair. And this raises a crucial question. Is the raven truly speaking? Right. Or is it a manifestation of the narrator's own fractured psyche? A voice from within his own grief-stricken mind. Whoa. I think Poe wants us to grapple with that ambiguity. He definitely makes you question what's real and what's not. Mm. The narrator's descent into madness is so palpable. Yes. It's like the Raven's presence, this embodiment of his deepest fears, is pushing him further and further, further, and further. into the abyss of his own sorrow. And it's fascinating how Poe uses the Raven's nevermore to highlight this psychological unraveling. Mm -hmm. The narrator keeps asking questions, hoping for a different response, but the Raven, like his own grief, refuses to offer any comfort or escape. It's like watching someone trapped in a nightmare, desperately searching for a way out, but finding themselves more entangled with each passing moment. Exactly. And the more the narrator tries to reason with the Raven, the deeper he falls into this vortex of despair. Poe is showing us the limits of logic when it comes to facing the raw, overwhelming power of grief. It makes you think about how we all cope with loss, doesn't it? Absolutely. The ways we try to rationalize it, bargain with it, right. or even deny it. But sometimes the only way forward is through the darkness, facing those feelings head on, as terrifying as that might be. That's such a powerful insight. Yeah. And Poe, through the Raven, isn't just telling a spooky story. Right. He's exploring the very human struggle to find meaning and solace in the face of the inevitable. Mm -hmm. The things we can't control, like death and the pain of loss, 
Yeah. And that's something that resonates with us even centuries later. It's like he's holding up a mirror to our own mortality, our own fears and anxieties about the unknown. Mm -hmm. And by confronting those uncomfortable truths, right. maybe we can find a way to move forward to make peace with the things we can't change. That's a beautiful way to put it. But uh, before we get too existential, let's not forget the poem's rich tapestry of symbolism. I mean, there's so much more to unpack here. Oh, absolutely. The raven itself is just the tip of the iceberg. Tip of the iceberg. We've got the bust of Pallas, the darkness, the constant references to Lenore. Right. All these elements weaving together to create this stifling atmosphere of gloom and loss. Poe was a master at using symbolism to evoke specific emotions in his readers. Mm -hmm. Take the bust of Pallas, for example. It represents wisdom, but the narrator, yeah. shrouded in darkness, seems unable to access that wisdom. Right. He's perched beneath it, yet completely lost in his grief. It's like he's surrounded by knowledge, by reason. Yes. But his emotions are blocking his ability to see clearly. Exactly. The symbolism highlights that internal struggle, mm -hmm. the battle between his rational mind and his overwhelming sorrow. Exactly. And then you have the darkness, yeah. this all-encompassing presence that yeah. represents the narrator's state of mind. Right. It's not just a physical absence of light. It's a metaphor for the despair that's closing in on him, consuming him. It's like the darkness itself is a character a manifestation of his grief mm. and the constant references to Lenore. Yeah. They're like ghosts haunting his thoughts. Right. Reminders of what he's lost and can never regain. It's as if Poe is creating a physical manifestation of the narrator's emotional landscape. Uh. The darkness, the raven, the bust to palace. These are all symbols that help us, the readers, visualize and empathize with the narrator's internal turmoil. It's like we're stepping inside his mind. Yes. Experiencing his grief and despair firsthand. Precisely. And that's what makes the Raven so powerful. Yeah. Poe doesn't just tell us a story. Right. He immerses us in it, forcing us to confront uncomfortable truths about ourselves and the human condition. And this is just the beginning, right? We've barely scratched the surface of what the Raven has to offer. Oh, absolutely. There are still layers to peel back, yeah. deeper meanings to uncover, and I can't wait to explore them with you. So get ready to delve even deeper into the world of Poe, because in the next part of our deep dive, we'll be tackling one of the most intriguing questions surrounding the Raven. Who or what is the Raven really? That's a question that has fascinated scholars and readers for centuries. For sure. There are so many interpretations, each offering a unique perspective on the poem's meaning and the nature of the narrator's psychological state. It's going to be stick with us because things are about to get even more interesting. Oh, they are. Okay, so we've established that the raven in Poe's poem is more than just a random bird that flew in the window. More than just a feathered friend. But if it's not just a, a feathered visitor. Yeah then uh, what does it represent? Right. What's the deeper meaning behind this creature that utters a single chilling word? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And Poe, being the master of mystery that he was, never explicitly tells us. Right. He leaves it open to interpretation, yeah. inviting us to become detectives of the soul, if you will, and search for clues within the text. It's like he's giving us a puzzle to solve challenging us to look beyond the surface and grapple with the poem's deeper layers. Exactly. So let's put on our detective hats and consider some of the possibility. Okay. One interpretation is that the raven is simply a creature of nature. Okay. Drawn to the narrator's chamber on that bleak December night. Yeah. Poe was fascinated by birds. Mm -hmm. And some argue that his detailed descriptions of the raven's physical appearance right. point to a more literal reading. That's a valid point. Yeah. Poe was known for his meticulous attention to detail, especially when it came to the natural world. Yes. But I can't help but feel like there's something more going on. Right. That the raven is more than just a bird that happened to tap on the window. It's that something more that makes the raven so captivating. Right. If we delve deeper into the poem's symbolism, a different interpretation emerges. The raven, uh. with its traditional associations with death and the supernatural, could represent the narrator's own mortality, his growing awareness of his own inevitable demise. That's definitely a darker reading, but it makes sense given the context. Right. The raven arrives at a moment when the narrator is already drowning in grief and despair, yeah. grappling with the permanence of Lenore's loss. Mm. The raven's presence could be seen as a physical manifestation of those anxieties about death and the unknown. And don't forget where the raven chooses to perch on a bust of Pallas. Oh, right, yeah. The goddess of wisdom, 
that juxtaposition is crucial. It's like Poe is highlighting the internal conflict within the narrator. Right. The struggle between his rational mind, represented by Pallas, okay. and the overwhelming force of his grief, embodied by the raven. So it's less about the raven being a literal bird. Yes. And more about it symbolizing the narrator's inner turmoil. The yeah. battle between reason and emotion that's raging within him. Precisely. The raven becomes a symbol of his deepest fears. Mm -hmm. His inability to escape the shadow of death. The weight of his loss. It's like... His subconscious is speaking to him through this dark, enigmatic creature. It's like the raven is giving voice to the thoughts and feelings he's trying to suppress, forcing him to confront the reality of his situation. Exactly. And then there's another layer to consider the idea that the raven represents the narrator's guilt over Lenore's death. Oh, interesting. Perhaps he feels responsible in some way. Okay. And the raven's presence is a manifestation of that guilt. Mm. A constant reminder of his perceived failings. That's a really interesting interpretation. It adds a whole new dimension to the poem. Right. Suggesting that the raven is not just a symbol of death, but also a symbol of conscience. Yes. A reminder of past mistakes and the pain he may have caused. And it ties into the idea that the raven is a tormentor. Right. Constantly reminding the narrator of his past, his loss, his perceived guilt. Mm. It's like the raven is a physical embodiment of his inner critic, the voice that whispers doubts and accusations in his ear. It makes you wonder if the narrator is projecting his own guilt onto the raven, using it as a scapegoat for his pain. It's easier to blame an external force, a creature of darkness, than to confront the possibility that he might be responsible for his own suffering. That's a brilliant observation. And it speaks to the complexity of the human psyche. Yeah. The ways we try to shield ourselves from pain, even if it means creating our own tormentors. Mm -hmm. But some critics take a more psychological approach. Okay. Suggesting that the raven is a symbol of the narrator's descent into madness. That makes sense, especially considering the poem's progression. Mm -hmm. The raven's constant repetition of nevermore could be seen as a reflection of the narrator's increasingly obsessive and delusional thoughts. Right. His inability to distinguish between reality and the figments of his imagination. Right. As the poem progresses, the narrator becomes fixated on the raven, desperately seeking answers from it, yeah. ascribing meaning to its utterances, even though it's just a bird with a limited vocabulary. Right. This obsession could be seen as a symptom of his deteriorating mental state. It's like he's losing his grip on reality clinging to the raven as a source of hope, even though it's only deepening his despair. The raven becomes a trigger for his paranoia, feeding his fears and driving him further into isolation. And it's interesting to think about how different readers might interpret the raven based on their own experiences and perspectives. There's no one right answer, which is part of what makes the raven such a timeless and enduring work of art. That's the beauty of poetry, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It invites multiple readings and interpretations. Yes. Allowing each reader to find their own meaning within the text. It becomes a mirror reflecting our own fears, anxieties, and experiences. Absolutely. So regardless of how we interpret the Raven's identity, yeah. what's clear is that it serves as a powerful symbol within the poem. It forces us to confront uncomfortable truths about mortality, grief, and the fragility of the human mind. And it reminds us that sometimes the things that haunt us the most are the creations of our own minds, the fears and anxieties we project onto the world around us. It's a haunting reminder that sometimes the scariest monsters are the ones we carry within ourselves. Okay, so we've delved into the raven's symbolic significance. But I think it's also important to consider the poem's setting. Right. And how it contributes to the overall atmosphere of dread and despair. You're absolutely right. The setting is not just a backdrop. Right. It's a character in itself. Yeah. A force that shapes the poem's mood. And meaning Poe mat meticulously crafts an environment that's both physically and emotionally oppressive, mirroring the narrator's inner turmoil. Right from the start, we're plunged into this bleak December night. Yes. It's cold, dark, and isolated, mm -hmm. reflecting the narrator's emotional state. It's as if the world itself is mourning alongside him, yeah, amplifying his sense of loneliness and despair. And then there's the chamber itself, described as cluttered and dusty, right. full of forgotten lore. Mm -hmm. It speaks to a sense of stagnation, a mind trapped in the past, unable to move forward. It's like the narrator is a prisoner not only of his grief, but also of his physical surroundings, a space that reflects his intellectual and emotional imprisonment. It's like the setting is a visual representation of his mental state, mm -hmm. dark, 
suffocating, and filled with the remnants of a past he can't escape. Mm -hmm. And then there are the shadows, this recurring motif that adds another layer of unease to the poem. The shadows are more than just an absence of light. Right. They represent the unknown, yeah. the looking fears and anxieties that plague the narrator. You have the raven's shadow, mm -hmm. a symbol of his impending doom, and the shadows cast by the lamplight, right. creating the sense of flickering uncertainty, yeah. as if reality itself is unstable. It's like the darkness is closing in on him, mirroring his descent into madness. Yeah. Poe masterfully uses the interplay of light and shadow to create a sense of claustrophobia and dread, yes. making the reader feel as trapped and disoriented as the narrator. Precisely. And let's not forget the time setting, Midnight Dreary, a time traditionally associated with supernatural occurrences and heightened emotions. It's the witching hour, a time when the veil between the worlds is thinnest, Oh yeah. a time for secrets and hauntings. Poe's choice of setting amplifies the poem's themes of isolation, despair, and the encroachment of the unknown. It's like the setting itself is a character, a force that pushes the narrator further into his psychological unraveling. Exactly. Every detail, from the time of day to the physical description of the chamber, yeah. works to create a specific atmosphere and heighten the reader's emotional experience. So we've discussed the raven's identity, the poem's setting, and the rich symbolism that permeates every line. But there's one more element of the raven that I think is worth exploring. Okay. It's something that truly sets Poe apart as a master of the macabre. Mm -hmm. His use of sound and rhythm. Ah, yes. Poe was a master of sound devices. Yeah. He understood that poetry is as much about how it sounds as what it says. And in the raven, he employs a variety of techniques to create a truly haunting and unforgettable sonic experience. Mm. One that draws the reader in and heightens the poem's emotional impact. I love how you put that. He doesn't just use sound for aesthetic purposes. Right. He uses it to build suspense, to create atmosphere, and to reinforce the poem's themes. Exactly. One of the first things you notice is the poem's distinctive rhythm. Yeah. It's written in trochaic octameter, which gives it this hypnotic, almost incantatory effect. Mm -hmm. It's like yeah. a heartbeat, but a slow, heavy one that evokes a sense of impending doom. It's like the rhythm itself is mirroring the narrator's emotional state. Mm -hmm. This slow, heavy beat that reflects the weight of his grief and the inevitability of his despair. And then you have the internal rhyme scheme, those rhymes within the lines themselves. Like, while I nodded, nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping. Yes. It adds to the poem's musicality, creating a sense of claustrophobia. Like, the narrator is trapped within the confines of the poem's structure, just as he's trapped within his own mind. It's like the sound itself is mirroring the narrator's psychological state, his feeling of being suffocated by his grief and paranoia. Mm, precisely. And Poe doesn't start there. He also makes extensive use of alliteration, assonance, and consonants. Mm -hmm. Those repeated sounds that create a sense of texture and depth in the language. It's like he's painting a soundscape with words, creating a sonic experience that's as rich and evocative as the visual imagery. You can almost hear the poem in your mind even when you're not reading it. Right. Think about the repetition of the Seiya sound in lines like, mm. and the silken, sad, uncertain rustling of each purple curtain. Yeah. You can practically hear the rustling of the curtains adding to the poem's eerie atmosphere. Exactly. Those repeated sounds create a kind of echo chamber, amplifying the poem's themes of loss and despair. And of course, we can't forget the most obvious sound effect of all, the raven's repeated utterance of nevermore. Yikes. That single word with its harsh guttural sound becomes a sonic representation of the narrator's growing despair. It's like a nail being hammered into his coffin, a constant reminder of his loss and the hopelessness of his situation. Mm. And the repetition of that word, it's like a drumbeat driving him further into madness. Poe's masterful use of sound devices elevates the raven from a simple narrative poem to a truly immersive and unforgettable sensory experience. It's a poem that you don't just read, you feel it in your bones. You hear it echoing in your mind long after you've finished reading. It's a testament to Poe's genius that he was able to create such a powerful and lasting impact using just words and sound. He understood the power of language, not just to convey meaning, but to evoke emotions, to transport the reader to another world, to make them feel the weight of despair, the chill of fear. Absolutely. And by paying attention to the sonic landscape of The Raven, we can gain a deeper appreciation for the poem's artistry and its lasting power. 
Mm -hmm. We can see how Poe uses sound to create atmosphere, build suspense, and ultimately draw us into the narrator's psychological unraveling. It's like we're experiencing the poem with all of our senses, not just our intellect. Exactly. It becomes an embodied experience, yeah, one that yeah. stays with you long after you finish reading. And that's the mark of truly great art. So we've explored the depths of the raven's symbolism, delved into its haunting setting, and experienced the power of its sonic landscape. We have. But there's one more aspect we need to discuss. Okay. The poem's lasting legacy, its impact on literature, music, and popular culture. It's amazing to think that a poem written over 170 years ago still holds such a grip on our imagination. It's a testament to Poe's genius, isn't it? Yeah. He tapped into something universal, something that transcends time and continues to resonate with readers generation after generation. And that's what we'll be exploring in the final part of our deep dive. Get ready for the grand finale, because we're about to uncover how the raven soared beyond the page and into the realms of music, art, and pop culture. Welcome back to our deep dive into Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven. The Raven, uh-huh. It's amazing how this poem, written way back in 1845, still has so much to say to us today. Really does. It's like Poe tapped into these timeless human anxieties about death, right. grief, and the limits of our own understanding. Absolutely. It's a testament to his genius, wouldn't you say? Oh, for sure. I mean, The Raven isn't just a spooky poem. Right. It's a reflection of the human condition, the darkness we all carry within us. And that's why it continues to resonate with people across cultures and generations, inspiring artists, musicians, filmmakers, you name it. Exactly. And that's where we're headed now. In this final part of our deep dive, we're going beyond the page and exploring the wider impact of The Raven on literature, music, and popular culture. It's amazing how this one poem has left such an undeniable mark on our creative landscape. Let's start with literature. Poe is considered a pioneer of the Gothic genre. Mm -hmm. And The Raven is like the blueprint for so much that came after it. Yeah. Think about the elements we've been discussing, the dark and atmospheric setting, right. the psychological torment of the narrator, mm -hmm. the blurring of reality and the supernatural. Yeah. These themes became hallmarks of Gothic literature, influencing generations of writers. Like Poe opened the door to a darker, yeah. more psychological kind of storytelling. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One that explores the shadows within ourselves and the world around us. Absolutely. And his influence is undeniable. You can see echoes of the Raven in the works of so many writers. So many. From the classics like Bram Stoker and Mary Shelley. Yes. To modern masters of horror like Stephen King. Absolutely. Poe gave them the tools, the language, the imagery to delve into these complex themes. And it goes beyond horror, too. You see Poe's influence in the works of writers like Sylvia Plath. Oh, wow. Who explored similar themes of isolation and despair. Okay. And even in the detective fiction of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Really? Who was inspired by Poe's analytical approach to storytelling. That's so interesting. It's like the raven planted these seeds uh -huh. that grew into a whole forest of creative expression. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't just writers who felt the pull of Poe's masterpiece. No. Yeah. The poem also cast a spell over the world of music. Oh, absolutely. There's something about the rhythm and rhyme of the Raven. Yeah. It's haunting imagery and themes of loss and sorrow. That lends itself perfectly to musical interpretation. You have classical composers like Debussy and Rachmaninoff setting the poem to music, wow. creating these dark and evocative pieces that capture the essence of Poe's vision. And it didn't stop there. Yeah. You have rock bands like the Alan Parsons Project creating concept albums around the Raven exploring its themes through progressive rock soundscapes. Mm -hmm. And even heavy metal bands like Tristania and Cradle of Filth have drawn inspiration from Poe's dark poetry. It's fascinating how this one poem has transcended genres, inspiring musicians from all walks of life. Mm -hmm. It speaks to the universality of Poe's themes, the way they tap into these primal human emotions that everyone, regardless of their musical taste, can relate to. And let's not forget about the Raven itself. That iconic image has become a symbol in its own right. Oh, yeah. Appearing in music videos, album covers, and even band names. For sure. It's like a shorthand for anything dark, mysterious, and brooding. It's incredible how Poe's poem has permeated popular culture. Think about all the films, TV shows, even video games that have referenced or been inspired by The Raven. Oh, I know. You have films like The Crow and The Raven itself. Right. A fictionalized account of Poe's life starring John Cusack. Yeah. And TV shows like The Simpsons and Supernatural have paid homage to Poe's work, mm -hmm. often using the Raven as a symbol of impending doom or supernatural events. 
It's like the raven has taken on a life of its own. It has. Transcending the boundaries of literature and becoming a cultural icon. People who may have never even read the poem recognize the raven as a symbol of darkness and mystery. Exactly. It's become part of our collective subconscious. Wow. A powerful image that evokes a whole range of emotions and associations. And that's what makes the raven so enduring. It's more than just a poem. It's a cultural phenomenon that continues to shape and inspire us even in the 21st century. So as we reach the end of our deep dive, uh -huh. what would you say are the most significant contributions of the Raven to our culture? What are the key takeaways we want our listener to remember? Firstly, the Raven helped to define the landscape of Gothic literature, paving the way for countless writers who have explored similar themes of darkness, psychological torment, and the supernatural. Secondly, it's had a profound influence on music. Mm -hmm. inspiring composers and musicians across genres to create works that capture the poem's haunting beauty and emotional depth. And finally, it's permeated popular culture, right. becoming a symbol of mystery, the macabre, and the enduring power of art to transcend time and boundaries. The Raven is a testament to the power of language. It is. The ability of words to evoke emotions, to transport us to other worlds, and to make us confront the deepest parts of ourselves. And as we leave you to ponder the mysteries of the Raven, mm -hmm. I'll leave you with this. What if Poe's narrator, trapped in his grief, <laughs> could ask the Raven one more question? Oh, wow. What question would you ask, knowing the only answer you'll receive is nevermore? That's a question worth pondering indeed. Mm. Maybe, just maybe. The real power of the Raven lies not in finding answers, but in embracing the questions, in facing the unknown, and in finding beauty even to the darkest corners of the human experience. Mm, beautifully put. Until next time, keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep diving deep into the rich world of literature and ideas.